Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. John this morning on this warm day, isn't it? Not as warm as yesterday. You should have been in here yesterday with all the windows shut. Never mind. Uh, Good to have you here. Today is the third Sunday of Trinity, and it is the Sunday of the lost sheep and the lost coin and how Jesus rescues us. I'm hearing all sorts of noises. Good. Our order of service is divine service seven, seven one. I'm doing some work on the screens, and apparently this one did not want to work today. So if you need the screen, it's over here, and it's hard to read. So um, use your hymnal if you'd like. Service one, this will be our order of service today. Everything else that you need is printed on the service folder, and of course the hymns are found in the back of the hymnal and the psalm at the front. All right, let's begin with our hymn of invocation. As surely as I live, God said, hymn 614. Divine Service, setting one, page 151. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Consider my affliction and my trouble. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are the God of my salvation. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Consider my affliction and my trouble. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord.
help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, have The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, multiply your mercy on us, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after Trinity is from Micah chapter 7. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who satisfies you with good? The Lord works righteousness.
He made known his ways to Moses. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He will not always chide. He does not deal with us according to our sins. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, As far as the east is from the west, as a father shows compassion to his children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious. As long. The epistle is from 1 Peter, chapter 1. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents 
than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance? Or, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We sing the hymn of the day. Jesus sinners doth receive 609.
In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, Jesus was with respectable people, the rich, religious, and honorable people. It was a fine house and a sumptuous supper. When Jesus was invited, he went. He did not despise or scorn those people because they were rich. Jesus did not come just for the sake of the poor or just for the sake of the rich. How much money a person had was not the important thing. He had come for all, not for all vaguely and in general, but because every single man, woman, and child needed him. The people Jesus had supper with last Sunday did not feel they needed him because they felt quite sure of themselves. They lived decent lives. They were the prominent ones in church. They were the leaders among God's chosen people. They had the scriptures, the law, and the promises of God. They were the seed of Abraham on whom God must surely look with satisfaction. And then when Jesus came their way, they were interested in what he had to say, of course. People were talking about this man from Nazareth, so they wanted to look him over to confirm their views and prejudices and really, ultimately, opinion of themselves. Jesus would be useful for their purposes, or they would have to tear him down and set him straight according to their way of thinking. But whether he came or not, whether he made interesting conversation or was merely an opinionated and boring son of a Nazarene carpenter, didn't really concern them, and certainly didn't and wouldn't make any difference to them. That there might be a need for a change in themselves. That they might need to be deeply influenced by him. That was far from their thinking. And that Jesus would be their Lord that they didn't even consider. To these people, Jesus spoke some hard words. You heard those last week. Jesus does not allow himself to be considered in a detached or condescending way. Jesus forces us to come face up to God. And when we confront Christ, we must say either yes or no to God, either amen or leave, because God cannot be taken in little doses. The whole pill must be swallowed. Jesus' host last Sunday felt they did not need God and acted if they had God already in their back pockets. So when God came to them in Christ and called them to himself, they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. Other things were more important to them. They wanted to keep their lives and their interests intact. They were well satisfied with themselves and their really petty little lives. They felt no need for him. Therefore, from Jesus, they received nothing, nothing but rejection. Of his supper, to those who were invited, they did not taste. Then today, Jesus again is a guest, but this time with a different sort of people. These are the riffraff, the poor, and the despised. The sort of people you didn't want to be associated with if you valued what people might say about you. Their lives hadn't turned out so well. They had failed of respectability and success and had instead given themselves to all manners of loose living to fill up those hollow, sinful lives. When Jesus visited them, he didn't have to tell them that they had gone astray or had wandered far from God. They knew it quite well. Their trouble was that they doubted whether God would have any use for them. They saw their need. And they looked to Jesus with hope. So when Jesus received them and went to have supper with them in their home, the respectable people complained. How can this man be a man of God if he associates with that sort of people? They were anxious about the cause of God, but not Jesus. Instead, their sort of God. They were unhallowing God's holy name. 
for a man who claimed to speak for God to be mixed up with some disrespectable people. God's business, of course, is with good people, the decent and respectable, people like themselves. But how completely they misunderstood God's business. And Jesus then shows them with the three parables, the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin, and finally the lost son. God's business is bringing and keeping lost sheep close to himself so that they may be forgiven and have the joy that God wants them to have in that forgiveness. They don't come to Jesus. Jesus comes to them. And to give all of that to us. When some said they didn't need him, Jesus turned and said to others who knew their need. It was not that he approved of their sin by eating with them, but rather acknowledged that they needed him so badly. Last Sunday then, it was the poor, the lame, and the blind that ultimately, Jesus said, would receive the fellowship and food of Christ. Today, it is the lost lamb. Now, as you know, or maybe you don't, but a sheep, as you've heard probably many times at least, is the most helpful, helpless and foolish of animals. The old German is helpful here. They were cough, mutton heads. Sheep need constant care, watching, and protection. By themselves, they are easy prey. All is well with them only when they stay close together and within the shepherd's care. They can't go it alone. So when Jesus calls us sheep, he's saying some basic things about us. We should cling together close to the shepherd. We should cling together congregation close to the shepherd, Jesus. But the big point of today's parable is about the sheep that goes wrong and gets lost. If you've ever heard the bleeding of a lamb that's separated from the ewe or from the flock and is lost, you will know how pitiful that lamb's plight is. Its peril and need are great, and to this need, a good shepherd makes a ready response. On the other hand, a hireling will, of course, not worry too much, for what is a single sheep out there amongst so many here? A hireling thinks only of the less or more of his own advantage. Better to keep the 99 safe than to go after the one that is lost. But the shepherd to whom the sheep belong has quite a different idea. He does not think numerically or mathematically, but instead thinks of each sheep individually. When one sheep goes astray and is in danger, he goes after it, leaving the 99, going after the lost one until he finds it. This does not mean that there's more or less of Jesus' love for any particular sheep. He does not love the 99 less because he leaves them together and searches for the lost one. He would do the same for each one of them. Consider this example. A good mother loves all her children, of course. But when one of them is sick, she gives all her attention to that child, worries and cares for the sick child so it will soon be better again. Does that mean that she's ceased to love her other children, that she's neglecting them when the one needs that special care, is sick, needs love? As it is with the good mother, so it is with the good shepherd. Special needs call for special care, each receiving according to their need. And remember, the 99 are relatively safe and secure. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in a Christian congregation. Many of us have been a part of this flock since our infancy, made sheep of Jesus by our baptism. Within this community of, of God's people, where, is, where there is safety and security and welfare, you can't be a member of a flock alone, in isolation. A sheep that is separated from a flock is a lost sheep. I think all of us know what this is like. Sometimes we have gone our own way and deserted the flock of God and our shepherd Jesus. And the truth is that lost to ourselves, we would perish, drugged and poisoned by the noxious needs, weeds of this world, 
prey to the lion who walks about seeking whom he may devour and torn by the sharp tear, teeth of fear and uncertainty. But the good shepherd will not let you perish. He comes after you patiently and lovingly and carries you back on his shoulders to the flock, as you see every week in the stained glass window. On our wounds and our injuries, Jesus pours the balm of forgiveness. And for our hunger, he gives us the food of his word and the fellowship of this, his flock, his family. If we are in the flock today, we must confess that Jesus is the reason that he came after us and carried us back here again. And when we stray, we know that it is we who stray. It's our fault. And when we are brought back, we know that it is he who brought us back, as Jesus clearly teaches. I did not, you did not choose me, but I chose you, he says. We can call ourselves his own flock today and hereafter solely by his mercy. He is the one that we put our reliance and our certainty in, not in ourselves, not in even our respectability and our prominence, our importance, what we've done for the church or for the world, our decent lives or anything of us. It is only in the unfailing mercy of Jesus, our good shepherd, who is so patient and good that we can claim anything. To be in the flock means to be guided by the shepherd, to follow his bidding and example. And that also means sharing his concern for the other sheep, especially the lost ones. We may not, like the Pharisees, ignore the lost sheep and write them off as not good enough, not fit to be associated with us or with Christ. Nor may we, like the prodigal's older brother, resent the special effort the father took for the lost son and claim that if anybody is to be bothered, it must be him. We know ourselves to have been often lost sheep. And Jesus found us. We know what it means to be a lost sheep that is found and to be brought back into the flock on the shoulders of our good shepherd. We want other lost sheep to know that too. The love, care, and concern that Jesus has for us is for them too. And we don't have to look too far for lost sheep. Many of them are even on our roles as members. Within the circle of our own family and friends, we will find them. And near us, many are wandering, lost from the shepherd and from this his flock. When we go after the lost sheep and seek them out, we show Jesus what it means to us that he sought us out and brought us back into the fold. And in doing this, we are promised something extraordinary in the gospel today, a share in the angel's joy, angels rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, one lost lamb returned to Christ's flock. This joy is God's goal for us, and this joy is never in isolation, separate from Christ and his flock, we are saddened. And joy is lost to us. But the good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. And it is his joy to knit us back together. And then to share the angel's joy over lost people brought again to life in Christ. Their baptism holding true. And so it is your shepherd's never-ending work to restore you repeatedly by his word, by absolution, by your baptism and by the supper. And so today Jesus has restored you to his flock and he sets a table before you. Whether you are rich, religious, honorable people or the riffraff, the poor, and the despised. All come, eat and drink, and be restored again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have embraced us, unworthy sinners, in the waters of holy baptism, where you clothe us with the bright raiment of Christ's righteousness. As your dear children, help us to serve one another faithfully and to live forever in your forgiving love. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we are grieved over those who have wandered from the safety of the fold of your church. Send your Holy Spirit to call them to repentance and faith, that they may return to your house. Embolden us to seek those lost sheep for whom your Son died. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, bless our homes, that parents would teach their children to love you, obey your voice, and hold fast to you. Grant that we and our offspring may live before you forever. We ask your particular blessing upon the households of Doug and Nicole, Wendell and Amy, Katrina, Duane and Pam, Dick and Milda, Dan and Liz. We also rejoice in the preservation of your household um, for my family, my wife and I, celebrating our anniversary this week. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, from, for whom all fatherhood is named, we give you thanks for fathers of office, especially our president, congressmen, and judges. Make their authority respected and honored by all, and let them use it according to its institution for the sake of those under their care, that all may flourish under your order. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, have mercy on our brotherhood throughout the world who suffer persecution for the sake of Christ. Assure them that after they have suffered a little while, you will restore, confirm, and establish them. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as we confess in the first article of the Creed, you bless us with many gifts each and every day. We rejoice with those whom you have given another year of life, celebrating their birthday. Deb, Autumn, Ruth, Eugene, Lisa, and Wyatt. Those rejoicing in the gift of new birth and in baptism. This week, Natron and Nicholas and Karen, David and Dennis. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, in the waters of holy baptism, your Son laid us on his shoulders and brought us home rejoicing. Give confidence to all who suffer especially those who have requested our prayers. Dasha looking for new housing. Matt Manzik's mom, Donna, being treated for a stroke. Those who are ill, receiving treatment or recovering, especially Dale, Pam, Joe, Melanie, 
Kelsey, Christopher, Marcy, Brad, Gus, Eileen, Ron, Doug, Bev, Joan, Pat, Wendell, and Darlene. That they all may know that he will bear them through their present trials safely home to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son receives sinners and eats with them. Embolden us to come in repentance to his table, to receive forgiveness and life in the feast of his body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you crown us with steadfast love and mercy in your Son. While we live amid many troubles in this sinful world, remind us by your word that you do not deal with us according to our iniquities, but are merciful and gracious to us. Call us to repentance and faith that we may take up our crosses daily and follow you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As a sign of the forgiveness Christ has bestowed upon us, and as we forgive one another, I invite you to greet one another with the peace of Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection Open to us the way of everlasting life. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
may be seated. Good. All right. I normally look at the screen here, and obviously, apologies for that. Keep working on it through the week. It's not easy trying to retro in uh, hardware that isn't available anymore, <laughs> find something that works in its place. So we're working on it. Uh, let's see. The couple opportunities for volunteer service this week, we have, um, what are the two things? They're in the golden rod. I just lost it. Somebody remind me. Oh, there we are. We have the uh, music in the park, which is on Thursday, and then the fireman's um, picnic parade, right? Yes. Those are both next month? Oh, that's next month, July. Those are both next month? All right, so you have things coming up. It makes plan to do that. I think, actually, is it the same week? It is. Um, the Synodical Convention is the 28th through the August 3rd of next month. They need volunteers. Any of you speak Russian or Korean? <laughs> Especially Russian and Korean, if you know that. Um, but also, they, just for hospitality, so we can be good guests for the Synod and Convention that, that will be visiting our state then. Uh, let's see, other, there's many other things in here. So read the Goldenrod sheet. Uh, today, I mentioned it's Ananias. Anniversary on the 27th, good, yeah, Tuesday. 20, well, it's confusing because 25th wedding anniversary, right? So I guess it's significant, thank you. I was inspired at, Don and Karen had their 50th, and looking at the pictures of their wedding, the old flower stands that were still in the basement, so uh, that inspired me to seek out flowers, and so you get to see the old flower stands again. And, everything. Right. and they're silver, right? So silver, okay. Sometimes I give you the method to the madness, right? <laughs> all right. So, Lord be with you all. We have Bible class, new big screen, so you can see the text big. All right. So thanks to, where is Mike? And who helped Mike? Sam. Mike and Sam put that up yesterday. Mike's been painting and patching. Thanks to Mike for that. Um, also, Doug, is he here? I didn't see Doug today. Um, Doug retroed in the school so that we could have, we're going to have new wiring put in at the school, replacing old wiring there. Uh, Doug did that work. And uh, Ron was here yesterday morning opening up the attic vent. Hopefully that helped today. Today is one of those days where make a note to call um, your lawyer and to amend your will to have a portion of your estate for air conditioning. It's <laughs> your reminder. It's only a few months in the summer, and then you're like, oh, we should do that, and then we forget. And, okay. <laughs> Lord be with you all. See you in Bible class.